Three things that we all need to look after in life, wealth, health, relationship. But the question is, what is your wealth goal and what is your plan to get there? What's going on everybody, it's Blandon here from Mortgage HQ and in this video, we're going to explore how you can set a financial goal and how you can potentially achieve it. So interesting fact, research shows that people with longer horizon on time perspectives achieve greater things in life. Simply put, people with a longer term view will have a better life. And so by the end of this video, I hope to not just encourage you to think about just the next property, but to aim for financial independence and have the options to retire early if you want. What this actually means is to have enough investment income coming in so that you have the option to stop working if you want and focus on the things that you love and you're passionate about, whether it is your family or your passion project or just this dream job that you can't afford to lose your current job to do. I hope it'll give you the confidence to be able to go for it and achieve it a lot sooner than you think. Now, when I first started learning about investing, I already graduated. I had a 50k job and I had a big student loan because I had already studied for two degrees but I didn't even finish the first one and like a lot of property investors I read Rich Dad Poor Dad and that really changed the direction of my life. I went to lots of seminars and I started learning from really good investors then I took action and applied all of those things and I was able to build a 10 million dollar property portfolio in just seven years and in the same period we have actually helped thousands of families get into property investing and I have personally helped several of them build a more impressive property portfolio in a much shorter time frame as well. So here are the three things that you need to know to accelerate towards your financial goals. And I'm going to be illustrating this on the spreadsheet here. So we're going to look at this couple in their 30s and they're looking to retire at 65. And what we're looking for here is around $80,000 of passive income on top of their superannuation. And this is computed using the 4% rule. And to simplify what this means, it's the safe withdrawal rate. So say for example, if you wanted $40,000 of passive income, you would want at least a million dollars in assets. Or if you want $80,000 of passive income, you would need around $2 million of future assets. So here's the first thing that you need to know most people actually start with the wrong goal or they start with no goal you know they might just think about how many properties they want to own but they forget property is only a means to an end and the end is to have some sort of cash flow coming in so you have options to do the things that you want it might also just be a lazy way to think about things because it's like quite easy to grasp if you have three property or five properties but if you were to aim for a million dollars it might be quite daunting so million dollar in net assets is what we we're looking for here in this case is two million dollars of assets generating eighty thousand dollar passive income now the second thing that you need to know is that majority of people's wealth plan is just to contribute the minimum amount towards their kiwi saver so after looking at thousands of applications the average kiwi saver is around fifty thousand and they would contribute three percent towards that let's say 100k income it would mean you contribute three thousand dollars so what does this actually look like if you had fifty thousand dollars to start with and three thousand dollars annually contributed towards that by the age of 65 you would have around six hundred seventy-seven thousand dollars. so this is what would happen if you just keep going but not quite the two million dollars that we're aiming for here so this is what we call the financial gap so to illustrate this is if you look on this graph here if we just do the minimum amount on the kiwi saver is this yellow line here but the green line is what we're looking for by the time that we're 65 but actually to fill this gap because you've got time it's not too hard to fill it. So if you want to look down here, it shows to fill up this $1.3 million gap, we just have to contribute around $14,000 extra on our KiwiSaver every year. So if you look at this, if we put $17,000 here, and what that will actually do is now take us to $2 million by the time we're 65 if we are getting at least 7% return on our investment. So as you can see, because we've got time and by a little bit of initiative, 
we're able to hit that financial goal that we want. Now, here's the third thing that you need to know, because not many people would want to retire at 65. If you want to have these options, you don't really want it at 65. You would probably want it when you're 50. So what does that look like if you want all of this when you're 50? So let's have a look at this calculator. And because you're 50, you don't have KiwiSaver. So we're actually going to turn this to zero. And if we wanted the 80,000, what do we need to do? We've got this massive gap that we need to fill in about 15 years, okay? And we would need to contribute around $80,000, $70,000 to an index fund. So 73 to $80,000 a year, which is quite hard because not many people will be able to save that kind of money. So the alternative option is properties and properties allows you to leverage, which means you can borrow money to invest. And in this situation, if we were to hit $2 million, we would need to invest around $1.4 million today at 6% return. And so now this becomes a lot more achievable because you just need to go to the bank and borrow $1.4 million and then wait 15 years there will be enough equity so that you can sell those property and then pay back the debt and have that $2 million that you want. But of course, the next thing that you need to think about is, well, how do I borrow $1.4 million? And if you look at the borrowing calculator, you know, just a typical couple, $110,000 and an $80,000 income with two kids, how much could they borrow if they had like a $600,000 mortgage? They can only borrow an extra $290,000, just a estimate, right? So not even close to that 1.4 million that we're talking about. But if you were to borrow money on a property that has much higher cash flow, around 10%, you would then be able to borrow that 1.4 million. As you can see in this calculator, this is what it's indicating. If you can buy a property with 10% cash flow, then you would be able to borrow this money. And so the next question is, what kind of properties are gonna give you that kind of return? Well, there are properties that give you that kind of return right now. And it's about just expanding your knowledge and understanding what sort of properties are out there and just learning more. Because once you have seen those, you will start to see a lot more of those. And so that's why I encourage you, because if we look in the current market, it encourages you to invest in new builds, but new builds are not going to be able to give you that type of return. And you won't be able to borrow that kind of money to actually achieve the borrowing that you need, right? So if you look on the market and we try to spread out all of the properties on a standard deviation, right? We need to look for properties that are above average and that requires learning. So at the end of that, I hope you guys got something out of that. And it's about looking at what your end passive income goal or equity goal is, and then having some sort of plan in place. If you have a long time horizon, you will be able to achieve much greater things if you took that long-term view and just do something about it. Remember, by contributing to 17, 20,000 towards your KiwiSaver, you could make a massive difference by the age of 65. Or if you want to accelerate your financial goals, you can use leverage, which is using properties, and you'll be able to get there a lot sooner. So until next time, I'll see you guys again.